there, miss. You see, the heterodynes were feeding back into the stimulus reaction activators, causing non-synapse of the motor control resistor units. Oh, that's good. No, lady, that's bad. But your regenerative circuits are tuned asynchronously, and that causes concatenation in the intermediate amplifiers. Well, that's bad, isn't it? No, that's good. From now on, I don't think there'll be the slightest trouble with your robot. Your domestic problems are completely solved. Well, thank you very much. And that's perfectly all right. And if there's anything else you want to know about your robot, don't hesitate to give us a ring. Good day. Rolo, answer the door. Sign here. Yes, Rollo the robot, the chromium-plated butler, is just a daydream after all. But not so Rollo's little brother and sister robots, the millions of small mechanical servants that never ask for afternoons off, the amazing machines and gadgets that almost seem to think for themselves. The tiny clockwork brains and heat regulators on our kitchen stoves apparently do almost everything except read the cookbook. Thinking machines like this keep golden brown slices of toast from turning into slabs of charcoal and keep the coffee hot until we're ready to start dunking. Then there's a tea kettle that's been trained never to boil dry. When the water is gone, the kettle simply pulls out its own attachment plug. And here's a gadget that ought to raid a bowel from every dog in the country. A Fido feeder that never forgets when the pup is dining home alone and the rest of the family is dining out. What's more, it tells him when to come and get it. In offices and schoolrooms, too, robots have learned to turn on the lights. This little electric eye measures the amount of daylight coming in the windows. When the light level outside drops below the requirement for good visibility, this robot throws a switch and the first bank of lights goes on. No robot machine has ever been accused of being absent-minded or careless at its work. Here, a robot that never sleeps nor winks, nor looks out the window, stands guard over the men who work at this giant press. As long as the robot can see the man, the press won't budge an inch, and that's mighty important on a big job like this. Did you ever hear of anyone getting his lap caught in an elevator door? That can't happen here, because as long as there's anything in the way, this door can't close. Step back, please. There's plenty of room in the rear of the car. All right, then, don't step back. Just take a deep breath and hang on to yourself. 
One little robot, for example, always remembers to serve drinks when it sees anyone walking around with a thirst. A beam of light is aimed across the fountain and into an electric eye. When the beam of light is broken by a solid object, such as this head, the electric eye control opens the faucet and there's your drink. This particular device is an automatic fire sprinkler. Someday, maybe someone will invent a robot that can take a joke. Some robots have even learned to fly. Tiny automatic brains in giant airliners, sensitive to the slightest change in balance or direction, relieve the busy pilots of the job of keeping the wings level, the nose on the horizon, and the plane headed in the right direction. Don't look now, but this motor car is simply full of robots. In the carburetor is a diet specialist, a brainy collection of jets and valves and floats that serve a health menu of gasoline calories and fresh air vitamins to the engine, a menu that varies with every change in speed or load. The engine likes its meals served not too hot and not too cold. So in the intake manifold, another mastermind with a nervous system sensitive to heat uses hot exhaust gases to warm the mixture before it goes into the engine. Step right up close to the platform and see the Siamese robots. These robots attached to the distributor are always worrying about the spark in the engine. One is sure that the spark ought to be advanced. The other is equally sure that it ought to be retarded just a trifle. But they never argue. Each takes his turn according to the speed and load, and between them, they manage to stage a grand performance every time they go on the road. One little robot, a very small but intelligent brain, sits up back of the engine in the voltage regulator and keeps close tabs on the generator to see that the generator makes enough current to keep the battery fully charged, but not too full. And still another deep thinker rides way up in front. Its job is to keep water from cooling off in the radiator until the engine is warmed up to a good working temperature. Then, in the vacuum power gear shift, there's a robot strongman who thrives on almost nothing at all. With a bit of a vacuum, this sturdy fellow can almost shift for himself, if we'll just tell him what we want him to do. Robots have even taken up the art of dial twisting in our radios. All we need to do is push the button and listen. Driving wouldn't be half so much fun if we didn't have that phantom crew of intelligent robots to help us. Every day, in our homes and offices, as well as in our motor cars, hundreds of these little robots are doing more things for us than we realize, taking care of the routine tasks and leaving us free to live and work and play in greater ease and comfort and safety.